Hello. Oh, isn't she sweet? Uh, she is so sweet. How are you doing? Hi, Elaine. Hey, Hi. Uh, what's your name? Aaliyah. Aaliyah. Hi. Say hello. E Elena can't be on camera because her father said he didn't want his daughter on the internet. Oh, okay. I didn't think I did not think to get his permission first. I mean, she's not my daughter. She's his. Yeah. So, and um, I told him I was going to do it. And he he told me this afternoon he just preferred not to. Oh, okay. So, okay. I'm disappointed. But she's so pretty. Hey. She just she's all dressed up and pink. Yes. <laughs> and she, she's happy, too. Look at her. She likes looking. Hello. Can you see me? Hello. <laughs> what a cutie. She's just woken oh. up. I didn't bring my my scriptures with me, but I, I've been rereading reading it over okay. and over again. I've got it here on the screen anyway, so I'll read it out. Um, okay. Once you're done. Hey. I'm you? done. Hi, Sister Phyllis. Hello. What a cutie. What's going on? Hey, what's going on? Hey. You can tell she's you can tell she's a happy baby, can't you? Yeah, she is. She's quite usually quite happy and easygoing. Hey, oh, you ready to go? You wanna go daddy? <laughs> go daddy? <laughs> go daddy? Not too sure there. Bye. Bye. Okay. Michael was just standing here at the window saying, I want to come on the show. <laughs> he's run off now. He's running around in his undies. So I said, no, not right now. <laughs> so he's run off now with the Leah and Mark. <laughs> you you look so pretty tonight. I mean, you always look pretty, but you look particularly nice in that little outfit. Oh, That's thank cute. you. My parents bought, my mum bought this the other week for me. So I thought I should try it on. Wear it. <laughs> there you go. Cool. Um. So so, yes, we're going to talk about um, Mishle or Proverbs 31 today, I thought. Um, I thought if I go read, read through it and then we can talk about it after, after I read it. So that suits you. <laughs> oh, will, will you do me a favor? Yeah. Will you read the very first verse? Okay, from right at the beginning of 31. You, you don't have to read it all. I just want to read the very first verse so that they'll know who is writing it. Oh, okay. Yes, I get I understand. Okay, so we've got, um, uh, it's Michelet 31, and the first verse is, The words of Sovereign Lemuel, is it? Uh, a message which his mother taught him. So that's who's writing this. Um, and then we can go down to verse 10, where it starts to speak about um, the his his what his mother's obviously saying to look for in a wife. <laughs> um, so we've got, who does find a capable wife? For she is worth far more than rubies. Her, the heart of her husband shall trust her, and he has no lack of gain. She shall do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She shall seek wool and flax, and with delight she works with her hands. She shall be as the ships of Tarshish. She brings in her food from afar. She also rises while it is still night and provides food for her household and a portion for her girls. She shall consider a field and buy it. From her profits she shall plant a vineyard. She shall gird herself with strength and strengthen her arms. She shall taste when her gain is good. Her lamp does not go out by night. She shall stretch out her hands to the distaff, and her hand shall hold the spindle. She shall extend her hand to the poor, and she shall reach out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household, 
for all her household is dressed in scarlet. She shall make tapestry for herself. She is dressed in fine linen and purple. When he sits among the, uh, her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She shall make fine linen and sell them and shall give girdles for the merchants. Strength and splendor are her garments and she rejoices in time to come. She shall open her mouth with wisdom and on her tongue is the Torah of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children shall rise up and call her blessed, her husband too, and he praises her. Many daughters have done nobly, but you have risen over them all. Loveliness is deceptive and prettiness is vain. A woman who fears Yahuwah is to be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her in the gates. So what did you want to say first? <laughs> That's quite a tall order. It is, yes. And, and it can be discouraging to young wives to try to live up to that. We can't expect every woman to live up to all of those things. So what do you think? I agree. I remember the first time I read it and I printed it out and put it on the wall and I thought to myself, oh my goodness, <laughs> there is, um, it's just, there's so much expected of this, this woman. Yes. Um, you know, uh, in today's world, a woman that met all that criteria, first of all, she would feed and clothe her household. She'd get up, like as I do, <laughs> before before the light of day and start cooking the meals for the household. And then she'd have her own business. She'd be an entrepreneur yeah. and have her business where she, that she makes gain and profit from. And in the meantime, she's going to make her own clothes. <laughs> and, uh, and, and it says she has to gird herself with strength. So she's probably going to go out and work in the fields too. Yeah. Um, that, that would be something a woman, a modern day version of that type of woman, which is um, a little bit strange. But I, I think we would have to look at that as the reason I wanted you to read the first verse is, and, and, I, and, I, and I made a mistake, I should have asked you to read down a little bit, because this woman is speaking to her son, who is a sovereign or is a prince expected to be a sovereign. Yep. So this woman who is the head of the household, she's probably just directing people to do this sort of thing. Yeah. And she's making decisions and she's making good judgments. You know, that's just my input. She's not doing everything with yeah. her own hands. She's marrying a prince, okay? Yes. She's not going to be actually cooking the meals. She's probably getting up and making sure that the the cooks are up and, and getting the pots boiling. Yes. You know? Yes. What do you think? I think, yes, I think that it would be, um, I know, well, yeah, no, it would be too much to expect of any one person to do all that on their own. Um, when And then you've got children, which she has children, because it says there, her children shall rise up and call her blessed. Um, she... To, to raise your children as well as try and do all that. Um, I think that that's, yeah, I, what you're saying is, is would be correct, that she would have to definitely have other people that she was directing and, and, and telling to do all that. But, I mean, it, it sort of gives us an idea, I think, of what sort of, like, you know, how the household, I guess, should be running a bit, you know, so we should be providing the meals and and... I guess making sure everything runs smoothly in the household. Right. Seeing to it. I, in other words, she's not going to be sitting on the couch drinking her diet soda, watching soap operas all day long while her children run around <laughs> about her, you yeah. know, getting into trouble. Yes. You know. Yes. Yeah. That's, yeah. And I think that's a great way to just look at this as taking away that we need to, yeah, exactly what you were saying, not be sitting around doing nothing. Um, but to make sure everything's running smoothly and that so she's backing her husband up when he goes out to work and that sort of thing. He's not coming home to, you know, a, a, a 
total mess with children running wild and exactly. um, there was an interesting thing that actually that was going around on the internet um, recently but also years ago I saw it um, and it said it was just a little little sheet that talked about um, a, a 1950s housewife and what it expected what what was expected of a 1950s housewife and it amused me because when I read it I thought okay well, that's seems right to me and all the women the first time I think I read it was it was being handed around at a play group that I was sitting at and all the women there are scoffing and laughing at how ridiculous this was that women were expected to be this um and I read it and thought well no it seems to make sense to me and it's just talked about these sort of things it talked about um the woman should make sure that you know there's a meal ready when her husband comes home and she should be like you know making sure food's ready for him making sure the house is tidy so he's not coming home and seeing stuff everywhere that the children are you know neat and tidy and and like well like not running around wild that they're well behaved and they you know speak like just that everything's calm and everything's in order basically that's that's the general gist it had specific points on this thing and 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 amazed me that that women these days don't think that they have to do that because of the whole feminist movement, I guess, that they don't have to, they don't have to do any of those sort of things. That it doesn't matter what the house looks like when the, when the husband comes home, how, what the house looks like any time or, or whether they cook for, for him or not, if he can make his own food sort of attitude that, that women have these days. So I think that, that even if you're not doing everything, obviously yourself that this scripture says to take on more of that attitude that you are, doing all that, 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 that is your role in the household rather than what a lot of women, I don't know what it's like there, but so many women here do think that they are um, now seen as superior to men in that they, they work so hard and that men should do more at home. And that's a real, um, well, it's just a nasty attitude that a lot of women here have um, that's a total opposite to what that says there. And so I thought, you know, that as women we should be, um, making sure that we are a general gist following that sort of having that sort of heart I guess to to want to to you know look out like look after the raise the children properly look after them look after the household you know and make sure that everything sort of runs in order and smoothly and and I mean husband Mark helps out heaps at, at our house but I would never expect him to come home and cook dinner for me and to clean up the house and do everything when I've been there all day and that's sort of my role. So, but I see a lot of women around me my age and, and with kids like mine doing that nowadays. So, which is surprising. Well, well the other side of that coin is, you notice the mention of, it doesn't mention the husband very often, but in every instance the husband's mentioned, he is in gainful employment Obviously, he's yeah. bringing, he's providing for the family, and he's known in the gates. In other words, he's a part of the community. He's not just a, a recluse. He doesn't go to work and come home and sit in front of his TV. He's made himself a, an important person in the community. You know, maybe he's uh, on the neighbor neighborhood around here in America. We have neighborhood watch. Yeah. You know, or you know, maybe he's done that, or maybe he's he's. An, participant in the school board or you know involved with the schools but he's doing something to be known in the community he's he is providing gainful employment for the wife to be able you know now on the other hand if the wife is having to earn a living too in order to make ends meet and that happens a lot here in America yeah you know then I think at that point yeah, the, the the chores need to be more evenly shared. If she's working, you know, and he's working, yes. Then then yeah, they they need to share some of the responsibilities around the house. I, I see that. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. But basically, I guess getting back to what 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 a, a power three one woman would look, would look like is while she's at home and. And taking care of the house and taking care of the children, you know, she could be doing some little homeschool project to, you know, either do something for the community or um, community work. You know, when the children are old enough, they could go out and they could do community service, or you know, maybe they 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 have a little home project where they can make little. They call it cottage. Can't think of the, the word now, 
um, projects where they can make a little money. You know, oh, who yes, knows? Yes. Yeah. Little, you know, there's there's computer work that some women can do. Yeah. I, I, can, I wear many, many hats during the day. Yeah. There is um, a lot of work these days. I know there's a lot more and more women um, working from home, doing work while they've got the kids at home and stuff, setting up businesses and all, uh, particularly with the, the internet these days, I guess there is uh, unlimited possibilities if you can get something going um, to do something like that at home, like you're saying, having a little um, business on the side. But, yeah. But, no, what you're saying, like, I mean, if, if the – and a lot of people over here have to – husbands and wives have to work, you know, once they have a mortgage and that sort of thing, the the, the pressure of it is too much for, for the wife to stay at home all the time. And, and then in that case, absolutely, the chores should definitely be divided. And But I think it's still – a lot of it is in your heart, I guess, it, your desire to want to look after your family and your desire to want to – to do it as well is really important, I think. Mm -hmm. Right, right. It, it's, it's part of that, like we talked about last time, about submitting, being submissive to your husband. Yes. And being his helpmate. I think that's really, you know what, that's really what that boils down to. Yes. She's being helpmate to her husband rather than dragging him down and nagging at him, pointing out his errors, you yes. know, and that's like what we were talking about last time. Yeah. You know? Yeah, being a positive influence instead of dragging him down, pointing out where is you know, yeah. and just being somebody that he that is going to help him and be there for him and raise his children and and also if her children are going to rise up and call her blessed, then that's because she's taught them to be respectful. Yes, you know, and, you, and children learn what they live if they're taught. Disrespect. If you're disrespectful to your children as you're raising them, then they're going to give it back to you when they get older. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, I do like the part where it talks about, um, and on her tongue is the Torah of kindness. Mm -hmm. So it talks about the way we're speaking to to our family, but not just our family, to everyone, like speaking kindly. I think, and, and um, it's just I find that this whole thing is very different, very opposite to what the world is, to what the world's women and the world's wives are like, um, to, telling us to speak kindly to people and, and, and like, I mean, you don't get it perfect all the time. We're not perfect. It's <laughs> not expected. But, um, you know, it's not. It's not something that you see exa examples of in in the world anymore. These like these days, you don't see woman a woman speaking kindly to the children and stuff. Most women are quite frustrated and stressed out and uh, and everything, so they're not they're not speaking kindly to their family. Um, and so, which is it happens at times, but you don't as a like I think as a natural woman, it's really important to come back to the scripture and see because. So we're surrounded by, I know I'm surrounded by people who are the opposite of this. And so if I was to sit there and use everyone around me as my examples of how to be a good mother or how to, how to behave as a wife, um, it would be the opposite to Torah um, because they're not speaking kindly. They're not, they're not wanting to submit to their husbands and that sort of thing. So um, having, like being able to come back to this and even read this, even just taking out a verse and saying, well, you know, I'm going to speak kindly. I'm, I'm not necessarily going to get up every morning and, and um, do, do some cooking and some sewing and go out to the fields before everyone gets up, but to speak kindly to, to you know, oh, the, the, she watches over the ways of her household. So you know what's going on in the house. You know what's going on with your kids, I guess, as your kids get older. Um, into teenagers and they start going out and doing things, you know what's going on, you sort of... You know, you're not. It's just so, so many kids are going out and doing what they want these days, and the parents have no idea what's happening. Um, that the she sort of she knows what's going on in her household. She knows what's going on with each family member, and she's sort of organised, I guess. <laughs> Very organised. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, and and you know something else was when you you mentioned a Torah. She's also teaching the children the Torah, and I find that. Often I have more time to sit with the children and go over, especially the grandchildren, and go over the commandments with them. 
and um, more often than than you know my husband and and I don't remember where it was but I noticed in earlier in Proverbs in an earlier Proverbs right right at the beginning it talks about listen to the words of your mother oh really and do you do you remember that I'm just having a look now right at the beginning I think it's Proverbs 1 I think um, oh it's Proverbs 1 a my son oh. Heed the discipline of your father and do not forsake the Torah of your mother. You see it? Yep, yep, I see it now. One, Proverbs 1 a. Yep, that's, yeah. I think that, that directly relates back to this Proverbs 31 woman that we're talking about. She's yep. teaching the Torah to the children. Yeah. Yeah, that's. That is um, a fan fantastic verse there, um, to, and it's directed there at the mother and the child, mm -hmm. telling the mother, you know, obviously the mother's expected to be teaching the child Torah, but, and it's telling the child, don't forget it. <laughs> it's important. Right. But it is, I think it is the most important thing. We probably teach our children every day. Uh, Mark's always said, I don't care if the children can't do algebra as long as they you know, no Torah. So, so it's always been an important thing to teach them that first and foremost. Right. And it, you know, and it, I heard that children learn what they live in. And I believe this too, because, uh, you know, it's, if you're, you, you watch a family where everybody's like you were saying, instead of blessing and speaking kindness, there's, you know, ill treating, speaking ill of the children, you know, embarrassing them or just talking down to them. If if you're if you're being teaching them kindness by being kind, understanding by living the Torah, they can trust you that you don't lie. You know, um, you you're not going to lie to them about Santa Claus or some yeah. kind of bun or you know things like that. You're going to tell them the truth about everything, yeah. and that's what they expect. Yeah. And and when when they you know little children they they think the line is is the easiest way out of a situation, yeah. you know. So you have to teach them somehow that yeah. it's much worse to lie about it. Yes. To do a deep tell the truth is far better than lying about it. And we've done that with the boys. They'll um they'll get punished for, for much worse if um if they tell a lie about something they've done than if they told the truth then they don't get in as much trouble and they've learnt that now and, and most of the time most of the time <laughs> they now tell the truth about things i mean they're still micah and brandon are still so young that sometimes they haven't caught on to it's easy, better to right. tell the truth but i do like that you know they are starting to learn to tell the truth as they get older and actually josiah went to have a sleepover at one of his little friends places his first ever sleepover a few weeks ago and they were playing in the little boy's bedroom and um, the mum came, his, his friend's mum came into the bedroom and said, oh my goodness, this is a huge mess. You know, you've pulled all the toys out of the cupboards. Um, and, and she was talking to her son and, uh, and saying, you know, you've made more mess than you can tidy up now. So I'm going to have to tidy it up. Why did you make such a big mess? And the little boy was just sitting there taking it. And Josiah said, excuse me, it was actually me who made the mess. And she, she just nearly died because she was so shocked that Josiah told the truth. I was so proud. <laughs> I thought, oh, my oh, goodness, yeah. I'm so glad that he <laughs> he did. But he And she was so surprised. She was just like, oh, my goodness, thank you for telling the truth. And so and, and she just tied up the room and it was all good. But I was really, really proud to see that that was rubbing off on him everywhere he went. To tell the truth is the most important thing, um, regardless of what punishment comes after. As if you've told the truth, that's more important than anything. And I think that is great tell, not teaching teaching them the truth about things like Santa Claus because they know we've never lied to them about anything. We've never, you know, right. like we've told them the truth about everything from the beginning. Right, right. That, yeah, they, they learn that, and that because how can you expect them to tell the truth if you don't? Exactly, yeah. And I feel, I mean, my kids are still young and I've, I'm sure you can um, talk about it more as they get older, but... I feel like if if, um, if we're having that honest, truthful relationship with them from a young age, 
as they get older, it'll stay that way, hopefully, and um, but we can be a bit closer and not ever be worrying about them. I know there's times where you worry about the teenage years and what's going to go on and what's going to happen, and <laughs> um, oh but I'm just hoping that by setting that groundwork here with tr with honesty, whatever happens, they feel like they can always speak to us and tell us the truth. They don't have to lie and hide and sneak, no matter what they do or what happens. At least we can have that relationship with them of honesty and truth. So I don't know. What's it like as, as your children grow up more having that sort of um, more of an honest relationship? See, sadly, I didn't raise my children in Torah. I didn't know yeah. anything about Torah. You know, I was never taught the Torah. Didn't know the Torah was important. If you, you, you'd asked me that when my children were young, what's Torah? Until Michael was eight years old. And even then, but then I was more Christian than I was in the Torah. Yeah. So I guess I really didn't start to even teaching them the commandments until Michael was 10 or 11. And and sadly, more of the ugly stuff was taught than the goodness and kindness. I didn't teach him kindness and goodness in those formative years when he, you know, between ages of one and five. That's when they formed their personality, and I didn't teach him yeah. the goodness, and, and, and I didn't teach him the Torah. And um, even even as Adam was growing up, I was better, but I was still a baby at it myself. Yeah. yeah. With the grandchildren, I for for a number of years in their early life, I was raising them because of some difficulties, and. I and I and I dealt with them with telling the truth. I, I just like you, if yeah. I caught them in a lie, I'd say, "Well, your punishment's going to be worse because you lied." Next time, just tell me the truth. Yeah. And quite often, to make my point, if they come and tell me the truth, I say, "Okay, well, it happened. You told me the truth. It's over. Let's just forget it and go on." Yeah. Yeah. And and there, I think I think it's. Well, I see a big difference in them. Yeah, <laughs> with my with my boys when they were their age. I, yeah. Oh, don't you just wish you could go back in time? Oh. You're being blessed to have it in the beginning with raising your children. And I am, and I really like I've realized that, and I'm so thankful that we have come into this. I mean, obviously, more and more as time's gone on, we've learned more, and there's some things I wish I could even go back and just as only six and a half but some things I wish I could go back and do differently with him from a young age um but I mean you your boys seem wonderful so I'm sure you've done a wonderful job anyway <laughs> um I don't know from all the the relationship Mark's had with Adam that he's a, a lovely guy um so um but I know it's hard like that but I guess it's just a matter then of trusting you and and they have their own relationship then to go on. So it's sort of, I guess, as a mother, you never stop worrying about your kids at some, uh, like, and being concerned for them and caring for them. But I guess they get to an age where you can sort of hand them over to him and and let him, like, they're old enough to make their decisions now, and and you just have to trust that he will. <laughs> but it's wonderful that you've had a chance to do it with your grandchildren. Sort of, it's almost like you've had that second chance to to do what you wanted to do. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's 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 a blessing. It really is, and 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 I guess you're right. That cause the proof is in the pudding. Michael's done a wonderful job with his children. Yeah, you know they're at, and I know they're my grandchildren, but I didn't raise them. I I did teach them the Torah when they were very young. Yeah, but he had them for the most part, and he's done a great job. They're well disciplined, well very respectful. Yeah, well then that's proof alone that you've done a wonderful job, I think, <laughs> because well, he wouldn't be able to do that without knowing, being having an example of how to to be like that. Um, I, I I was just thinking then that while we were speaking about discipline and punishment and things, and we're in Proverbs, to talk a little bit about the the Proverbs in twenty Proverbs twenty one or Michelle's twenty one, where it talks a little bit about um, the, the children. Punishment of children. I'm just scrolling down to it. Sorry. <laughs> you know, you know Pro Proverbs is so full of information. When I, I remember when we would, because we would sit and read them to the children, and I would think this is just. 
I'm, I'm getting overwhelmed, you know, yeah. because until we started keeping the Torah and, and, and reading, we never even, I never even read the scriptures really, except, you know, when you go to a Christian organization, the, the preacher will take a passage out of context, just, you know, sometimes not even an entire verse. Sometimes yeah. it will just be a uh, half of a verse. And, and then and he'll read this and then make, a, you know, a 20-minute sermon on half of a verse, you know, and that's all the scripture I ever received. And so when we started reading the scriptures from the very beginning, it just made so much sense. And, and I'd like to encourage everybody uh, to start, if you haven't done it, Take a copy of the scriptures, even if you don't have the scriptures. If all you have is the King James, at least you're going to get something. Yeah. Start from the beginning and read straight through to the to Revelation, because it just makes so much sense when when you read all of the prophets and and all of the the proverbs and and you see what. The, the Israelites had to go through. Yes. And you see what happened. You see how the kingdom got divided. And you read the Proverbs. You read the Psalms of Solomon. You read all of the Psalms that David wrote. And it just makes, when you get to the end, and then you, and then of that, and then you start with Matthew. And after you've read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, then when you read the Acts, it makes sense to you. Yeah. Why are they doing this in Acts? I remember Lou used to tell me how important Acts was, and, and I thought, what's that? You know, but after I read straight through, and then we read Acts, I went, oh, yeah, this is what the apostles did after the resurrection. Yeah. I never knew it before. Yeah. So what did you find? Um, I, I was in 21. I, I just went everywhere, all over the place looking for it, and it was right where I started. Um, there's a few verses that surround the discipline of a child in um, in Proverbs. One is that I've got here is in 21, uh, 15 is folly is bound up in the heart of a child. The rod of discipline drives it far from him. Um, and there is another one. Uh, well, at one place I know it says, "Do not if you spare the." Yes, rod, that that's what I was looking child. for. Yeah, yeah. Right. And, you know, I think the rod is a metaphor for whatever the rule of in the household. I, th I think the rod can simply be a stern word from the father. Yeah. Because yeah. the father should be the discipline, the main disciplinarian of the house. Of course, you know, if the disciplinarian has gone to work. Yeah. <laughs> to be, you know, and if you want to use the father as the rod, then you say, I'm going to call your father right now. I still do that with my grandchildren. Yeah. When, you know, the oldest one's 11. Sometimes he gets, he, he just stands there and looks me in the eye. And he's just, he do, he's not doing anything to defy me, but he's not doing what I ask. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So he's just standing there. And I'll get my cell phone out. And I'll flip it open. I said, I'm going to count to three and I'm going to call your dad. Huh? And that is yes. the rod. You know, and I don't do that very often because I want them to respect me and do it because they're in my household, but they're getting older. Yeah. And dad is the disciplinarian. And so he's the ultimate rod that I use if I have to. Yeah. If I can't, if they, if they won't do it because of their love for me and their respect for me, then I got to get the rod out. And, yeah. and in my case, it's the cell phone. Yeah. I flip it open and then. I've got their attention. Yeah. So I, I think that's, I think the rod is a metaphor. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes you might have to use a literal rod. I don't, I know my son has used the belt on yeah. the children. And I, I, of course, this is probably going to go out over the internet and <laughs> we're going to get a condemnation, but it, it's necessary. Yeah. You know, if there's no real threat behind the, because if they don't learn to respect the father, then they're not going to see any reason why should they respect Yahuwah. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I mean, we have we have smacked the children generally with a um, wooden spoon. I remember my dad using the belt on me when I was growing up. It was like the 
the ultimate of punishments though. So it was, he'd right. just jiggle the belt and we'd just be like, okay, I'll do what I'm told. <laughs> So it was only once or twice we actually got smacked with the belt. The rest of the time it was just the threat of the belt was enough to, to put you into line. And and it does, like, I mean, I've learned that with our children, you know, they'll get smacked once and then you say to them you need to do what you're told, otherwise you know what the punishment is and that's it. They fall into line. It's a matter of being consistent, expecting the same thing of them all the time, which is really important rather than getting going up and down all over the place. But I've done the same thing with Mark, like, um, it would be, I'll have to tell daddy when he gets home what you've done and you're going to be in trouble and that's, that gets him into line. And then we've had times where Mark's come home and he says, oh, how's your day? Have you been good today? And we've, t they've had, they've had to tell him cause he'll ask them, they've had to tell him what they've done. Um, which is actually far worse they feel for them because they don't, they're terror, they're, they don't want to tell him. And he's not a really terrifying person, but to actually have to commit to uh, admit to what you've done during the day for them is terrifying. So, and that has worked as well. Like what you're saying, the whole father, father being the disciplinarian, it, it, and it's very true. And they seem to be just much, um, I don't know what it is. They, I don't know if it's just that the, the mothers are more about the loving and everything else and the fathers are stronger looking and, but it is, yes, it's very much so in our house as well that Mark is the the um, the scary one when it comes to <laughs> to discipline. And, and, you know, it's not just because he's the scary one, but they don't want to disappoint him either. Yeah. They want his respect. They yeah. want that pat on the head, that approval, and and that can be just as bad to not get the approval. You yeah. know, that disappointed look. Yeah. yeah I, yeah, that that's, and, and I think that's why it takes a father and a mother. That's yes. why you hook put us together. Yes, and 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 you know somewhere, it is written <laughs> that the women will forsake their natural. What's the word? The women will forsake their natural way of life. I I can't think of the word. Yeah. You know, and that's what we see. Yeah, uh, they'll, they'll turn their back on how they're supposed. So they're they're trying to raise the children by themselves, single parents. I mean, they're getting married and getting divorced, and the children are, and if and if either there's either there never was a dad, or the kids are being passed back and forth between the mom and dad. Yeah, and it's just it's just awful. It's just it's all was all prophesied the way, it, you yeah. know, the way it's now. That's the way it was prophesied that it was going to be. Yeah. And it is getting worse and worse all the time, like the divorce rates raising, rising and almost every, every parent you meet now is um, a single parent or um, I've got some friends um, from years ago who I, when I used to babysit their children when I was growing up and I had so much respect for them because they were just this, they were just this wonderful family to me, um, and they were they had this great relationship and they had wonderful children and I just thought that's I wanted to be my goal when I was growing up was to be like them, and since I oh, I think it was just when Josiah was born I found out that they'd um, gotten divorced. And he's now off partying all the time, and uh, it's absolutely devastating. But she's now stolen the kids and run off and gone. And it's just, it's just really heartbreaking. And those, ch and that was to me was actually really devastated me for a long time because I'd seen them as if they've got it together. If if they haven't got it together, what have I? What hope have I got? You know, if they've they've if it's all fallen apart for them. I started to think years ago, um, before I knew anything, um, that. Um, and, and just watching everything that's going on with them and the kids and what, what happens to the kids, how confusing it is for them. And, you know, they've got one parent who's out partying and trying to relive his teenage years and one parent who's just lost the plot and so angry and bitter about everything that she's run off and stolen them. And so it's just, it is, it's really horrible for the children. And I just don't, I you have to just pray that Yahusha comes back soon because I don't want to see what the next generation is going to be like when it's this bad with the kids, the way they're being raised. And I get a lot of, on a lot of parenting websites and a lot of Facebook things, um, there is there's so much uh, anti-punishment, anti-respect. Like they're not teaching their children to respect them. They're not teaching their children to behave themselves. There is such a, a freedom of, of raising your children to be free. 
um, and to do what they want and be how they want and and we don't want to punish them because that would squash their spirits and things and <laughs> what about that <laughs> you know that is so funny it squash their spirit I'm like well they have to be disciplined but you know I think I, I'm scared I yeah. am scared Amy because I'm trying to imagine the world being run by these brats, these brats that have no respect for their parents yeah. or for each other. Yeah. It, it's really, really scary. And they're taught um, that they can have what they want when they want it because uh, their parents don't want to say no to them. So it's you want this now, you can have that now. You want that now, you can have that now. And I just think when they grow up and, and are in the real world, that's not how things work, and and they're going to be just brats. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be terrifying. <laughs> I, I I don't know. I don't know if you keep up with. We, we have these um, Occupy Wall Street or Occupy this city. It's yes, one all over. Yeah, we've got it in Sydney. We've got it in Sydney. Occupy Martin Place or something. I think it was down in the city. Well, they were interviewing one of these occupiers. I don't remember the city or whatever, but what I remember is the reporter walked up to this person. I didn't see it on TV because I don't watch TV, but I heard it on the radio. Yeah. And and the, she said, well, what is your sign all about? Your sign, want, you, you want free college tuition? Why do you think you should get that? His answer, because I want it. I just thought of it and decided that's what I wanted. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Does that sound like a little child and is asking, telling his parents, I want this. And what does the parent do? They, he, obviously, every time he wanted something, his mommy or daddy gave it to him. Yeah. And so now yeah. he's an adult. This was an adult. Mm -hmm. And he wanted free college tuition because he decided he wanted it. And, and the reporter said, well, who's going to give it to you? Yeah. Well, the government. Are, and, and she says, how are they, how is that going to happen? Well, I haven't thought about that, but it, it's, it's what I want. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> this this is what mm -hmm. our world is going to come to when yeah. these brats take over the government. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And you do, like, I know going out now, Anywhere we go, anything we do, yeah, there is a, um, a a a fear that someone's going to tell you off because you expect your children to behave a certain way, or like because everyone's into this whole free parenting thing that you don't tell your children what to do. Um, that when I go out and I say to the the boys, "Don't touch this, don't do that," you know, you know, expect them to behave a certain way. I'm frowned upon because I'm telling my children what to do, you know. <laughs> And if and if I smack them, in, in most of the um, oh, yes. people I'm around, I would be, in their eyes, a child abuser because my children oh, have absolutely. a smack on the on the on the bottom. And <laughs> so you, you can't touch your you can't touch your child in public right now in in, no. in the United States. Right. You cannot. You know you're you're getting pixelated from my end. I hope it, Am I? no, either better. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, you you cannot touch your children in public. I, um, it's, it's awful. Yeah. You know, I saw this one child was demanding something and the parent, and it was his father too. That was the scary part. And she was just screaming and screaming, but I want it. I want it. I want it. And this went on for about five minutes. I want, and then do you know what? He turned around, he went back and <gasps> gave it. No, no, no. <laughs> Yes, he did. Oh my yes, goodness! He did. Ooh. <laughs> I know. I can't I, handle that. <laughs> I'd want to scream. I, I know. <laughs> I couldn't I, watch that. Wow. We actually took um, yesterday. My brother and his wife are expecting twins um, in a few months, and they were doing a a baby registry thing for gifts at a. Uh, baby store um, not far from us and we went with them just to, for the day out to spend some time with them and my parents and the, the baby store is combined with a huge toy store huge toy store and I said to the boys before we went in we're going into a big toy store you can look at things but you're not having anything please don't ask 
and they went through the whole store and didn't ask for a single thing. They did get to ride around on little bikes around the store. They thought it was um, fantastic, but they didn't ask for a single thing. And I said, I put down my foot before we even went in there. You're not having anything. Don't ask. <laughs> and even if they did, they wouldn't have got it, which I actually have to put my foot down with my dad as well to say you don't get them anything <laughs> so, <laughs> so, always as bad because he would just give in to them very quickly he was never like oh I guess he was like that a little bit with me he has this whole daddy's little girl thing um but he was usually quite my parents were fairly strict very strict with me growing up but now that they're grandparents they've changed a little bit <laughs> they are a little bit more loose with the the boys but um yeah like oh no i couldn't do that and, and most of the time very rarely if they've asked for something i say then you're not going to have it now um maybe one day down the track they might get it as a surprise but generally when they ask for something i say no we're not going to have it now because otherwise they expect everything and i've got too many children to buy everything they want anyway <laughs> i've go broke <laughs> Right, so, absolutely. absolutely. Actually, on that on that topic, we have had clients. I had a client come in to the salon who um, asked, said to me, "Oh, Christmas must be really expensive for you." I said, "Oh, we don't celebrate Christmas," and went into that with him. And I said, well, "I'm actually very thankful because it would just drive us broke if we actually did celebrate it with all our children." But I had heard of um, families then that had spent a thousand dollars on each child at Christmas time. Mm. And I just, oh, far out. <laughs> the things they could get for $1,000, the things you could, oh. So I, um, oh, I, I'm, I'm very grateful that we don't <laughs> do any of those things for monetary reasons as well. It's very expensive, all the things that children want and need. And, and we've had children come over to our place for, to play and say to us, oh, where are your, your Wii games? The little boy said to me. I said, excuse me? He goes, where are your Wii games? And worked out that it's a computer game thing that they play but we don't have any computer games in our house and I've, I've said I don't want them um and so these kids come over and expect us to have all these things and and the boys have got the the bare, bare minimum of stuff so um <laughs> they haven't um and, and Josiah had his first experience on a computer game a, a Wii game at a friend's house as well and and it's just uh turns them into different children I think but yeah they don't they all these children that have all these things everything they want um, are all surrounding us. It can be hard for the boys at times, but um, but we always remind them of the commandment. We say, "What's the tenth commandment?" <laughs> and we say to them, "You're not allowed to want other people's stuff." So they're very, they're pretty good with that. They're still young, but they're doing quite well. But it is yes, parents giving their children everything, not punishing them, and and all the parenting things are saying that you're wrong if you do punish your children and. It can be quite overwhelming as a young parent if you're not if you're not confident in Torah. Um, it can be very overwhelming all this parenting advice and stuff that you can get to 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 not do that. And and now they're coming out with scientific evidence to say that if you smack your child, you're scarring them for life, or, or even punishing them in an unfriendly way, <laughs> in not being their best friend, is going to scar them for life, and you've ruined and damaged your children. So it's really trying to make parents feel so guilty. I got, I mean, I'd gotten to the point where I actually said to Mark a few weeks ago, I am so bombarded by stuff on Facebook that's telling me I'm wrong for everything I do, basically, um, that it's overwhelming me. I said, I just, I got, I thought to him, I, I said to him, I, I need to, I feel like I need to get stuff out there for parents who, who want to actually do the right thing for their kids so that they can be bombarded with actual truth um, because it is, for a young parent, you just don't know what to do, what to do, where to look, when, and then you get given this scientific bit of evidence that says you're going to damage your child if you punish them or smack them, and you go, okay, well, I'm not doing that then, and then, so what do I do? Oh, my goodness, it, it is terrifying. Um, so it's, I think it's really important to use, um, to use the scriptures and to use the Torah as our parenting guide <laughs> um, to turn to that when you're looking for something because there's always the answers in there. Exactly, yeah. That was good. <laughs> what you say? <laughs> I, I agree a hundred percent. I I just think um, children need to be respectful, and they're not going to learn respect. And and you also, but you do have to respect them, though. You can't just tell them you're a dummy. Yeah. You have to correct them in a very respectful way. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, you nurture, yes, but that can be done 
lovingly without being totally permissive. Yeah. You know, over permissive. Yeah. There's a balance, I think, you have to get that balance of, of, of doing it, everything in love. And when you do punish them, um, doing it in love. I, I, there was a lady at one of our, I have too many stories, I think. There was a lady at our, um, one of our homeschooling groups who, she was a Christian lady and was quite openly happy to tell everyone that she smacks her children, but she didn't say she smacks them, she hits them. And I was really taken aback by her saying that because to me hitting is a, a violent thing and a, something that you do because you're angry at someone and smacking your child should be done because you love them and you want them to learn the right way to behave. And and so we've always had a policy in our house when the kids get a smack, it's cal done calmly, that's how it should be done, and in love, and they get explained to them why they're doing it, and they get a hug afterwards, and it's so that they know we love them, but they have to learn how to behave. Um, and she's just telling everyone that she hits her children because they, she hits that little boy because he's so naughty and she can hit him ten times in a day. And, he and I was just horrified. And I thought that's why people think that smacking is such a horrible thing. If you're going around telling people you hit your child, it sounds really violent and rough. And, um, and we've always made sure every punishment should be done in love, not out of anger. It's sort of like if you're angry, we need to walk away calm down and then come back and punish them calmly. Otherwise they don't see anything. They just see you being angry and they start to imitate and be angry um, back at you and they don't um, and they don't see what they're being punished for. They just see your feeling and they just feel upset because you don't seem to love them or something now. And so I think any, any sort of punishment you're dishing out is always got to be in love and because so, you want them to learn something. Right. I, I think that was very important for you to say, Amy. I, I thank you for adding that in there. That was very important. I, I think I only have so many words in a day. Yeah. <laughs> and I start running out of words to say. Yeah. Did we have any other things that we needed to cover? I don't um I don't think so that I could think of today. I was sort of a little bit unprepared today. I actually said to Mark this morning, oh, I haven't even thought about it. We've been away for half the week and then um, busy getting back settled into the house this week. So it's sort of been a bit hectic and I hadn't had a chance to think about it um, until the last minute. So no, I don't, I'm surprised I've had that much to say <laughs> without any well, preparation. I'm so glad that you sent me the, a heads up that we were going to discuss, you know, the Proverbs. Um, because I think that's very criti crucial, criti critical to, you know, teaching wives and husbands how to raise a household. Yes, yeah. absolutely. I, I would recommend that, that mothers sit down with their children and, and read Proverbs to them. Even if they're not enough to, uh, you think they're not old enough to understand, it's going to get into them because... Um, hearing the word of Yahuwah yeah. is as is important. Not just reading it when you can read it, but hearing it because it was originally handed down as oral. Yeah. Because you so would read it to them. Yeah. You know, and, and and it was always the tradition always has been to read it to say it out loud. It yeah. wasn't all written down at first. Moshe had it all up here in his head. He spoke it to them. And so it's, you know, in hearing the word of Yahuwah. Yes. And, and Yahushua said, um, if you will listen, if you will hear my commandments, the truth shall set you free. I know I didn't say that correctly, yes. but it's one of my favorite verses. But yes. I can't remember. I've got so much rolling around inside my head. I'm sorry. I'm it's sure some of Whoever is listening to this, they're going to say they're going to know exactly what I meant yeah. to say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's wonderful. Oh, well, it's been fantastic today. I think so. Um. Yeah. Everything you said was great too. <laughs> I don't have anything to add there. <laughs> we're we're approaching the one hour mark. Are we? And on? Yeah, we are. It's my my timer says fifty five minutes and. Oh, wow. Well, that's gone quick. My goodness. Yes. I've actually, I, no, one point on that. I've noticed, because um, I was telling you a couple of weeks ago that I'd started reading to the boys at night um, when they're in bed. 
and, and now they actually ask me to do it each night and if I'm not available if I'm putting Aaliyah down to sleep or something Mark will go through the commandments with them they go and they love doing that but um, they they I, I, I thought at first I'm just reading it to them and it's a, a lot for my benefit and for them to just hear it and and like you were saying I was like okay well they'll see it's important to me so I'll, I'll read it to them but over the last few days, they've started to comment on things that they'd heard in 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 the what I've been oh. reading, and just little out of the blue comments. And and Luca Luca seems to be who who to me out of my children, he's a bit a bit of an airhead. Like he's just really you know really laid back. Luca, his personality he doesn't seem to take everything in. He's sort of off in his own little world, and he's talking about. It. And he's but he's but he seems to have taken in heaps because he's saying to me, he'll sit in the car and he'll say to me. Um, oh, I can't even remember. I should write his questions down. Some of the questions he came up with asking me, "Can you who should do this? Did you who should do that? Did you who should make this?" So, and and even when we we're at the swimming pool at the at the holiday house there, um, in the park area, there was a swimming pool there. We we're swimming, and some other kids and their dad came with this big blow up jet ski thing, <clears throat> and it had a motor, and they're riding around the pool, and the boys are all sitting there staring at it, excited, and I said, um, mm -hmm. "Yeah." yeah. I'm sorry, Lou just gave me the 60-minute thing. Go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, they they're sitting there watching, all excited, wanting like de like going, can we get one of those one day? And we said, remember the tenth commandment, you're not allowed to want other people's things. And then the little after they'd all gone, okay, yeah, yeah, we, it's okay, you know, we've good stuff too. And they're playing with our things. And the little girl came over and said, would your boys like to have a turn? And they were so excited, absolutely thrilled. And we said, see, when you stop wanting other people's things, you get to have a turn. And so all little things like that that they're starting to, oh. to see, I've just noticed a huge difference since just reading it to them more regularly. Like it's, I mean, it doesn't happen every single night. Some nights things get in the way. But just and most nights we're trying to and they're laying down in bed going to sleep. And they go to sleep much easier, like just much more peacefully. I can walk out of the room they're just peaceful and quiet and everything's calm. And, and so, it's yeah, it's wonderful. That, that is awesome when you see the, the truth actually, the Torah actually manifested itself in the children. That is, that is so sweet. That's so yeah. precious. Thanks for sharing that. That's all right. Thanks for all your insight today. It's been wonderful hearing, um, getting a bit more perspective on Proverbs 31 as well, not feeling so overwhelmed by it. <laughs> I, I'd like to close on one note, uh, not to not to be a downer here, but I do want to mention that a, a dear, precious brother has passed away to join Yahusha, and his wife, um, his name is um, Ken French, he, William, his name is William French, he goes by Kenny, and his wife is Diana, and um, she called me today and said that her husband passed away, that They've been so encouraged by, you know, the, the seminars and and they they were learning from the seminars that Mark was producing for us be, you know, before Adam even came and and they've um, been so blessed uh, by the truth and by the Torah and <clears throat> and she was so confident knowing <coughs> sorry, knowing that he had, he had left to join to go join Yahusha. Yeah. And <coughs> I'm sorry. Anyway, so I just wanted to share that with you. I'm going to <coughs> we're talking now because I've got a cough. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. We'll keep them the family in our prayers and that they have peace and everything's right. All right. She she yeah, pray for it because she's she's doing well. Oh, she that's she wonderful. is. But she's you know, it's she misses him. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Okay. Well, well thank you, Amy. It yeah. was nice to talk to you. Yes, you too. And we'll see you um, in in yeah a couple of weeks, I think, again. Okay. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Thank Bye. He is good. He is good. He is good. Yahusha is good. Great is His loving kindness for